Hello and welcome to the overview for the Cisco Cloud Fundamental Show. This show is for the exam 210-451. We want to make sure as we go over this overview to make sure that you understand some of the exam details as well as cover the exam topics too. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at some of the exam details. So for us to find information about it, it's simple. You can go to your favorite search engine and when you do so, you can simply type in Cisco exam 210-451 and that will probably bring you up to a page that's fairly close or very much this particular page right here, which says CLDFDN exam. Okay? That is the name of the exam that we're talking about. And it is for the 210-451 exam. Make sure you know that number because you'll have to register for that through your Pearson View Registration Center. Now, you can register online. And if you already have an account, you know exactly what to do. But if you haven't, you actually create a free account. You'll register for that exam with that exam number and you'll schedule a date to take your exam as well. Now, when you do so, and you have to schedule, and then you have to pay for the exam, the cost, at least as of now, and these, these may actually change, it depends on your locality, okay? But the cost right now is about $300 US dollars, okay? So make sure you check that out. And as far as I know, the exam is really only available in English at this point, so do make sure you note that too as you get started, okay? Now, in the exam details, as you get ready for this, you do need to know that it's also about 90 minutes for the entire length of the exam. It can have anywhere between 55 to 65 questions. Okay? That is not out of the actual realm of possibility that you may get 65, or you may just get 55 or 57. It's very much a possibility here. Okay? When you do choose to go and register for the exam, make sure you choose a date and time that's going to be appropriate for you. Show up about 15 minutes early, bring two forms of ID with you, and you'll also, of course, have to follow the testing policies at the center that you're actually testing at. And once you get in there, you'll actually be able to take your exam and be ready to pass it as well. Okay. Now, when you want to find out more about how you get prepared for this exam, notice that they follow this particular crumb trail here, where you see overview and then you see exam topics. If I click on the link for exam topics, that will now bring me to the following page, and it's right here where you actually do see all of the exam topics. And they're collapsed down right now. But there's actually an easier way for you to be able to see this, which is there's a link right here that says download complete list of topics in a PDF format. Now, this is important. The entire show that we're about to do here for our Cisco Cloud Fundamental Show will be based on this particular document itself. Okay, So we'll cover all the details in that document and what we can actually do Make sure that you have a good understanding of all of those exam objectives that are listed there. Now, I've previously done that, so we wouldn't have to do uh, too much more. But I've downloaded that, and that will, of course, give you the official document here. And you'll see that they've actually named it New Understanding of Cisco Cloud Fundamentals. Now, on the exam, it just call it Cisco Cloud Fundamentals itself. Once again, it gives you a description. And make sure you understand this, too. Okay? It says a candidate okay, is tested on the knowledge of well, for us, data center fundamentals, basics of unified computing, okay? Of course, also of the unified fabric that you have, storage, virtualization, network services, hypervisors, Windows servers, Lin, uh, Linux OS, okay? Remote connectivity, VPN solutions, doc, documentation of design, system builds, configurations, and support procedures. Now, what does that mean for you? That means that if you are coming to this as your first Cisco exam, you may want to backtrack for a moment, okay? And what I mean by that is it's probably going to be easier for you at this point to instead go towards your CSENT itself, the CCENT, and then towards your CCNA routing and switching before you take this particular exam. Even though it's listed as a fundamentals exam, it will be beyond challenging for you if you don't have those basic networking concepts down for you and if you don't understand some of the things that I've highlighted right here at just the most basic level before you begin this series, okay? So that is at least uh, a, a uh, recommended prerequisite. There is no real prerequisite for this, but this particular exam, of course, it would be one of two before you can earn your CCNA uh, cloud is what you would actually end up earning. There is a 210-455 exam that you also have to take, and that will give you that, uh, that particular certification, which is CCNA cloud, okay? Now, for us, we'll be taking a look at all of these different topics that you see. Notice that in domain one, we'll be talking about the basics of cloud characteristics and models. 
and we'll be following the NIST guideline and documentation to help us to understand what we mean by the terms that we see right here in the first domain as well. Okay. Same thing, using those same NIST documentations, we'll talk about the cloud deployment uh, that we have ready to go, and then we'll jump into the Cisco-specific uh, ideas here in cloud deployment, especially this idea what we call the Cisco InterCloud solution. Now, just as I mentioned this idea of the Cisco InterCloud solution, this product is no longer available, and according to the program manager for the exam itself, we should not see any questions on the Cisco InterCloud solution. Okay. So we'll actually replace that with what we call the Cisco Cloud Center solution. And we'll take a look at the information here and try and find the equivalents to be able to do that. Okay? Now, as we move into the third domain objectives, you'll see that we will have a basic knowledge of cloud computing. Okay? And that, of course, identifies the servers that are actually associated with the Cisco UCS, the UCS Manager, Central, as well as the B-Series, the Blade servers, and rack-mounted servers inside of the Cisco UCS solutions as well. Okay? That's a big, you know, big uh, uh, feature that we want to make sure that we focus in on too. And understand, of course, the basics between uh, type 1 and type 2 hypervisors and what operating systems are actually supported in them as well. Then in the fourth domain objective, this is where we hit the idea of cloud networking. And this is where the virtualization now becomes a bit more abstract for us as we go into this. We are used to virtualizing things like computers, right? We can create virtual machines to do so, but most of us probably have not worked with the idea of virtual networking. So we'll see the basics here of the Cisco unified type of fabric. We'll also talk about SDM, the software defined networking, and then the ACI, the application centric infrastructure, is what we'll also be talking about as well so that we understand that too. And then we'll also take a look at the virtualization of infrastructure where we spend a good bit of time in the Nexus 1000V and that we can actually understand the difference between, of course, the distributed virtual switch and the V-switches that are actually out there too. And the terms VLAN and VXLAN, those are also key for us. We'll actually take a look at that. And our last domain objective covered on the exam objectives itself is about the idea of cloud storage. Understanding the basics of storage provisioning concepts. We'll also take a look at the difference between file and block technology. We'll take a look, of course, at file, at not file, at SAN storage concepts as well as NAS storage concepts. And we, of course, we'll talk about the difference between file and block storage, like I said. And then we'll, of course, hit the Cisco-specific types of storage, such as their uh, multi-layer uh, director services that they have here in this family, and then the Nexus family as well. These are all uh, data center types of switches. And then the UCS Invicta, which is a storage appliance too. So that's also uh, available as well. And then lastly, in our particular series together, We'll also describe the idea, of course, of the various types of integrated infrastructures where each one of these solutions provides for us a fully deployable solution that is part of a Cisco validated design, which means computing uh, or the compute uh, in terms of virtualization, the networking, as well as the storage as well. And all these are actually different ways that we can accomplish the same thing. So if you are ready then, of course, to dive right in this, okay, please do. And the very next video that you click on We'll actually get you started into the realm of our Cisco Cloud Fundamental Series. So go ahead and click on that next link and ready to dive into the world of Cisco Cloud Solutions.